But one of the things that I, I liked in that conversation was uh, the story that you were pretty heavily, or you were offered some pretty good cash not to come public with the, with the book in the early days, what people or companies were af- afraid of what you being open about what was actually taking place behind the scenes might actually do to their ability to be able to have those conversations? Yeah, so, you know, so at one point, uh, I'm, I'm taken out to dinner uh, by the president of Stone and Webster, uh, in, Stone and Webster Engineering Corporation, a big, big, big company. And uh, they've been a, a, a rival of ours, a competitor with us when I've been chief economist. And, you know, he takes me out to dinner and, and he says, you know, um, uh, we, we'd like to hire you as a, as a consultant to us. You won't actually have to do any work for us. They're not much. We might ask you to take a, a trip down to Rio de Janeiro to have a fancy dinner with some people or something. And our private jet. We might ask you to do a few little things like that, but, but we won't, uh, uh, you won't have to do much work for us. Uh, but we'd, we'd like to be able to include your resume on our proposals. And that's a fairly common thing. And you pay a guy a retainer and you can use his resume. And it's, you know, somebody that's, imp- that's impressive. He said, so, you know, and he said, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to uh, write you a check tomorrow morning for half a million dollars, a retainer. And this is back in the 80s. <laughs> you know, half a million dollars is nothing to sneer at now, but it was a lot, a lot then. A lot more than it is now. And, <laughs> yeah. and uh, he said, that, uh, of course, you just can't write that book we know you're working on. Because I'd been, I had been starting the book that became Confessions, and I'd been talking to other people that had been in the business. And the word got back to him. And so he said, you know, so take it or leave it. You can, you can come and work, you know, not work for it particularly, but take this very lucrative deal. And, uh, and, and this is just the retainer. We'll be paying you on a monthly basis. Also, if you actually do anything for us, we'll pay you for that too. Uh, you know, or, or um, and at the same time, I was actually receiving threats uh, getting these anonymous phone calls, uh, you know, with this muffled voice on the end, threatening my my infant daughter and in, in my life. Uh, and so, you know, here I'm, 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 I'm getting exactly what I had done before. I'm getting a pistol pointed at me and my daughter, or I'm getting a, a large amount of, of money offered to me. Uh, and so, you know, what would you do? I know what I would do. I think you made the decision that I would make. I mean, yeah. you take the money. Yeah, and I wasn't being asked to do anything illegal. I wasn't really being asked to do much of anything at all. Uh, and so, yeah, it seemed like a, a really good opportunity. Man, and you can see how it works. It's not even a conversation. I've, I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old boy. I, I pretty much do anything. The, you know what? The very first thing I would do is take half a million dollars to protect them. I'm like, that seems like the ultimate deal. What, my kid's safe? And I've got, I think uh, PBD worked it out to be $1.7 million in uh, 2022 money, uh, which was when that podcast was recorded, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a nice little contribution just to keep going about your life. And so I was interested, though, because obviously you were paid not to write the book. And then in 2004, you did write the book. and so. What happens? Obviously, at the very least, the monthly repayments have stopped. <laughs> well, yeah, at that point. Uh, so I, I was that that offer was made in the late 80s. And uh, by the time I wrote the book, I, my, my contract was up. In fact, there'd been a new president come into the firm. And he and I had a history, which is I, I don't think we have time to go into, but uh, he didn't like me uh and i knew some things about him that he didn't really he didn't want me around so he 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 ended we ended that relationship and i'd made plenty of money off it i was very happy to end it at that point anyway uh, so i ended it so i had no obligation not to write the book any longer uh and you know at, at that point i i felt that the most dangerous thing i could possibly do for my daughter now who's much older uh, was not to expose what the heck's going on in the world because it's a dangerous world. Plus, I'd also come to understand that uh, really books aren't that, that, they're not a big threat to most of the people in power because um, 
people in power expect to be there for a fairly short amount of time, whether they're CEOs or, or, or elected officials. You know, and books take a long time. If, if a book's going to actually create any actions at all, it's over a long, long period of time. Books, And so I really, really come to understand that this probably wasn't going to be a, a big problem for me. And a lot of time had gone by since those those initial threats that had happened. Uh, and you know, somebody way back then, back when when the threats were made, I may, might have been a greater threat because I've been right in the business at the time, but now I've been out of it for a long time. And so, you know, it seemed reasonable at this point uh, to to do it. I also be, uh, understood. And, and and had several conversations I write about in, in the book, including with a woman, a Colombian woman, who at that time I was dating. I, I, I got divorced, and and uh, she kept saying to me, "Well, look, John, if you if you know uh, uh, people are uh, the the CIA, the NSA, anybody who might be in a position to do something about you, the last thing they want is to see you." die mysteriously because that's going to sell a lot of books and they want the opposite so if you write this book uh and get it out there just don't tell anyone ahead of time that you're writing it so you know the secret to being a good whistleblower is don't threaten to blow the whistle don't blow, don't don't tell anybody you're doing anything until you have all the information you need and you've made it public very quickly you make it public and at that point, at least in my case, that would mean that it would, you know, if something strange happened, he'd sell a lot of books. And that's the only yeah. thing anybody would want. Uh, 